Star Trek style tricorders, AT&T injecting ads into websites, Facebook fights piracy, and self-healing materials made for space. These are today's bits. The idea of bringing technology out of the sci-fi series known as Star Trek and into real life is nothing new. In fact, it actually can serve as a goal to some scientists to be able to match what they see on TV. Well, a new device called Mouth Lab aims to bring advanced data into the hands of medical professionals everywhere. Currently, it's capable of assessing four vital sign indicators along with reading blood oxygen levels. But newer versions are already planning to include saliva analysis, blood sugar readings, respiration, biochemical analysis, and metabolic rates. You can check out the video here or links in the description to read more. But it is safe to say that we are close to having Star Trek style tricorders attached to every nurse's hip. AT&T has been caught injecting ads into their public Wi-Fi hotspots. They were only doing this in a couple airports, but after they were caught, they stopped doing it altogether and then claimed it was only for a test. But the point is, is that they've taken the first step in not only intercepting your data, but then also manipulating it. On one hand, I can kind of understand if they were going to offer a free public Wi-Fi in exchange for a few ads. But on the other, it does kind of pose a huge security risk if the wrong people were to exploit it. What do you think? Could you accept some ads on top of the websites that you visit that already have existing ads in exchange for some free internet? Let me know in the comments. A while back, YouTube introduced their content ID matching system that automatically scanned and matched copyrighted content. This came as a big change to YouTube. YouTube. This came as a big change to YouTube because before this, it was almost like the Wild West in terms of copyrighted material. Well, if you have uploaded any videos to Facebook lately, then you might have noticed that unless it's reported, Facebook does not automatically remove or disable any audio or video that has copyrighted stuff in it. At least, not yet anyways. Now that Facebook is looking to take on the video giant of YouTube and start offering payment to content creators, they are now looking at adding their own form of content protection. This is going to be interesting to see because according to the article I read, almost 70% of Facebook's most popular videos have copyright content in them. Check out the links in the description to read more. A huge threat in space is the existence of micrometeoroids. These tiny objects can fly at speeds fast enough to go right through solid metal. And the biggest challenge, if you survive the initial impact while in space, of course, is to find the hole and patch it up before you die. A new material that starts off in a liquid form can be placed in between two solid layers, and then when it's exposed to atmosphere, it will expand and harden. So if a spaceship happened to get struck by a micrometeoroid, the hole would automatically get fixed just by filling in, being exposed to oxygen, and then hardening up. Now, it doesn't actually fix the issue completely. There are still some limitations of durability and longevity of the material, but it does allow the astronauts enough time to find and repair the hole without leaking out valuable oxygen. Gotta say, that's actually kind of cool. A small bonus story today revolves around Google Chrome and those damn annoying autoplaying video ads you see on regular websites. Now I'm not talking about the pre-roll video ads that you see on YouTube. What I mean is when you go to read a news article and the site decides to play a small little one inch ad that stupid volumes that scares the crap out of you and sends you on a frantic search to find the source. Apparently Google has had enough of it and plans on updating Chrome to stop those ads from automatically playing. It's about time too. Nothing is more annoying than when you're silently browsing news articles at night and then all of a sudden someone starts screaming at you about some stupid product that you just can't live without. Actually, I take that back. There was even a more annoying thing when websites used to automatically play music in the background. You remember that? Maybe that's why MySpace failed so badly. As always, if you like what you saw today, make sure to click the like and subscribe button below.